Welcome traders to another Tick Mill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 25th of October with me Patrick Monday. Uh, this week we see 157 firms release Q3 earnings in what could be among the most important weeks of the prolonged earnings season. Alongside the kickoff that was around financials, uh, breath fans out into key names and segments whose surprises can impact multiple asset classes including names such as Facebook, Twitter, Alphabet, GM, Ford, eBay, Starbucks, Amazon, Merck, 3M, UPS, GE, Boeing, Caspilla, Apple, MasterCard, Microsoft, and Visa. Uh, US releases will be fairly light, uh, but a few that are certainly worth watching. We get consumer confidence. The October reading from the conference board lands on Tuesday. It's been declining, and this has sparked some concern over risks uh, to the economic cycle. Thursday, we get GDP, the first estimate for uh, third quarter GDP arrives. We're um, looking for an above consensus 3.5% quarter over quarter annualized growth. On Friday, the Fed's preferred PCE inflation gauges for September will be released. They should broadly follow CPI with an estimate headline increase of 0.4% month over month. That would lift the year over year rate to 4.5% with core inflation rising to 0.2% month over month and increase the ticks 3.7% year over year. Income and spending are also released on Friday. Income growth uh, faltered probably um, more so than in September. The main estimate, estimate culprit for that is the elimination of the uh, extra $300 a week supplemental jobless benefits for the remaining uh, mostly red states that have not already opted out of the supplemental payments. It's unclear if reduced supports will benefit uh, job acceptance but the experiment has uh, certainly been interrupted by the Delta variant, such that if cases continue to decline, then it may become a purer experiment. Uh, lastly, pay attention to durables. Uh, goods release on Wednesday probably fell by about 1.5% of the month of September, in part based on a steep decline in aircraft orders and ongoing challenges in the auto sector. Core orders, ex-defense and aircraft are estimated to have risen for a seventh consecutive month. From a technical perspective, the dollar index sitting right on that monthly pivot at 93.50, uh, trying to uh, trying to stabilise there. Look for any pullbacks into the 94.10, 94.20 area uh, to set up a potential three-way corrective move down into the ascending trendline support at 93. Now, from there, we watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, targeting that 50% retracement up towards 96, and the projected. Ascending trend line resistance got monthly range resistance coming just above that 96.20. At this stage, it would really take a loss of this trend line support uh, just below the 93 handle to suggest that the upside has uh, has basically played its uh, played its part out, and we're looking for an extension down. Then certainly thinking about uh, monthly range support 91.80, and then through there we're looking back down into those. But for now, we look for a three-way correction to extend to the upside. <clears throat> In the Eurozone, uh, CPI for October is forecast to rise about uh, half percent month over month. That would take the year over year rate up towards three and a quarter percent, while core inflation is estimated to stay just under two percent year over year. Year ago, base effects are contributing to peak core inflation pressures now, though, through to December before the year over year rate is likely to decelerate again into the new year. Germany and Spain update inflation the day before, while France and Italy up date it on Friday. The first estimate for Eurozone Q3 GDP growth arrives also on Friday. Growth is expected to be just over 2% quarter over quarter at a seasonally adjusted but non-annualized pace as the economy continues to rebound from the mild contractions over the 2020 Q4 and 2021 Q1. The ECB decision is also released on Thursday. could be the most significant meeting uh, to the global markets. It's fairly widely expected that President Lagarde will lead an effort to push back on prices for hikes to the minus 0.5% deposit rate. At present, markets are pricing most of uh, 10 basis points hike by next summer, though uh, the return to zero rate is well down the uh, well down the road, really. Expect lots of talk of base effects, transitory drivers and slack in terms of its inflation logic going forward. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar, uh, similar to the dollar index here, testing some pivotal 
resistance at the 116.50 to 116.70. As this area contains, and certainly as the trend line here at 117.15 holds, uh, holds prices on the upside, we look for an extension down into that, uh, that test of the 114.30 area. And from there, we may see a more meaningful recovery uh, take place at this stage. We need to see a close back through 117.50 to suggest that the downside correction is complete and we can reassess uh, upside objectives. Now, moving to Japanese yen, pretty light calendar week next week in terms of data. Uh, we do have the Bank of uh, Japan on Thursday, but it's very likely that they're going to do anything that's going to be market moving. And then on Friday, we get Japanese September industrial production. Uh, supply chain disruptions continue to hit that figure hard. We're looking at something around the uh, minus 0.3.6% print for that. Uh, talking about the dollar yen in terms of the technical setup, looking now for a pullback into this ascending trend line support 113 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage again on the long side. Looking for the equality objective 115.80 and then on to projected ascending trend line resistance at uh, 116.50. 47. At this stage, really would need to see a close below the uh, trend line support here, 112 at 70 area, to suggest that we're going to see a deeper pullback. Certainly, then we can think about 111.50 and then the trend line support coming in 110.22. But for now, we watch for the trend line test, bullish reversals, and engage on the long side. Sterling. Um, the autumn budget and spending review on Wednesday will be the week's main focus in terms of the uh, sterling market. The key question is whether economic upgrades and better borrowing figures provide room for Chancellor Sunak to offer significant giveaways. The answer is probably not. Here are the main uh, economic details to look out for, really. Firstly, the economic growth forecast for the 2021 by the Independent Office for Budgetary Responsibility, or the OBR, is likely to be revised up significantly from its cautious 4% forecast back in March. The Bank of England, for example, predicts growth of 7.25%. However, the OBR is likely to lower its growth expectations for 2022. Overall, though, less economic scarring than expected may point to an earlier return to pre-pandemic output levels previously at uh, second quarter 2022 and more positive medium term assumptions. From a technical perspective, sterling traded into the trend line resistance, found a bit of uh, supply there, profit taking. But as uh, this internal trend line supports now at one, just below 137, we look for a test of range resistance back up into that 139.80 area. At this stage, it would take a close below the trend line to suggest a move back down to test the monthly pivot and structural support just below 136. If we fail to find buyers there, then we think about a retest 134 en route to that quality objective 133.20. But for now, focus remains on the upside. Watch the bullish reversal patterns at the trend line to add to long positions, targeting a move up towards that late 139 area. Finally, uh, down under in Australia, <coughs> the main uh, data of note will be Wednesday's Q, uh, third quarter inflation figures from Australia, expected to maintain persistent pressure despite expected deceleration in year-over-year -year headline inflation. Central tendency estimates, including trimmed mean and weighted mean CPI, are expected to rise by a half percent quarter over quarter, non-annualized, and lift the year-over-year -year rates closer to the bottom end of the RBA's 2-3% to target range for headline inflation that is expected to pull back close to 3%. From a technical perspective, the, uh, the Aussie dollar traded into, I'm just going to draw this in here for you, um, we traded into an equality objective that we have been, uh, we've been tracking. So we have this A, B, and we hit the C pretty much to the tick and found uh, some supply there. Now, we could have completed this corrective move. Um, the first indication that that scenario is playing out will be a loss of uh, the pitchfork support here and the pivot there, uh, 73.77. But as this area does support, so pullbacks, watch for bullish reversal patterns here as an opportunity on the long side to target trend line resistance up to 76.14. But if we do lose the trend line support, then we want to be looking for a retest of the 7170 next week. And that concludes the week in market outlook for week commencing the 25th of October. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.